So we're going to begin our Thai massage foundational flow by starting with Waikuru, which is essentially showing respect to our line of teachers and to ourself and to our client. And we'll do this by rubbing our hands together, warming our hands, and then visualize warming your heart. And coming from your heart center as you perform this massage. And then begin to enter a meditative, soft state, a state of observation and non-judgment. So then we'll start by placing our hands, the heel of our palm, right on the medial aspect of the heels of our client. And we'll sink down, bringing our body weight through our arms and into our hands. And then we'll move to the arch of her foot, sinking down and then slowly releasing. And then moving to the ball of the feet, sinking down, pausing and slowly releasing. And then back to the middle aspect of the foot, the arch, sinking down, slowly releasing. And then once again to the heel, returning, sinking down, slowly releasing. It is a one, two, three, two, one movement that you'll see repeated throughout this flow. And then we'll begin rocking side to side, transferring our body weight into our arms and into our hands. It's called palm press walking. So we make our way up to the ball of the foot on this medial aspect of both feet and then walking back down. We'll turn our fingertips forward and we're gonna use the side of our hand and with the ulnar side of our hand, we're going to press that gastrocnemius and soleus away from the tibia. We're going to circle by the kneecaps, just finding some points where we kind of sink in different pressure points. We can use our fingertips and our thumb to find points to either sink in or points where we kind of circle a little bit. And then we're going to begin walking up on the quads. If our client has ropey musculature, we're gonna to wanna to bring that tissue inward and then secure it and press down. Otherwise, we can pretty much just press down evenly as we walk up on the thighs. And then we're gonna make our way up to the anterior superior iliac spine. And we're gonna do that with the heel of our palm just below that landmark. We'll sink down a tiny bit onto the inguinal ligament and then we'll transfer our body weight onto that space. This is our first arterial compression that we're gonna do. And in this foundational flow, it really is the only one that, uh, that we do in subsequent levels. Uh, this becomes something that is, is utilized within Thai massage. We'll stay here anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute, suppressing blood flow so that when we lift up, we will increase circulation, increase blood flow. So your client is gonna feel this through their entire lower limbs. So I'm gonna slowly release that. And I'm going to not touch my client as I sit back down. <clears throat> if you were to press on any part of your client's legs when you do that, that would block that sensation. And we want them to be able to feel that uh, circulation as it comes down through their legs and their feet. So now I'm gonna take my client's left leg with my right hand and I'm gonna traction back by leaning my body back and my arm will follow. I'm gonna take my left arm and reach around the lateral aspect of her foot. And my arm's gonna be in a fixed position. So it really is primarily my um, hips and my lower body turning and the rest of my body follows. So I'm gonna reach around this lateral aspect as close as I can to the crease of the ankle and I'm gonna traction back and then just lean back and twist. One, so I'll be my first space. Moving again, two, slowly releasing. And then three, and then making my way back down. Essentially, we're dividing the space that we're working on into thirds. One, two, three, two, one. I'm gonna switch hands. My left hand holding the Achilles tendon and the calcaneus, her heel. Reaching around with my right hand and twist one, that first space. 
two by the arch of the foot, coming back, three by the ball of the foot, and then returning back, one, two, three, two, one movement, dividing the space that we're working on into thirds. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my left hand and hold underneath the popliteal space. I'm gonna bring her foot next to, well, the side of her knee. I'm gonna come up with my foot on the mat and then kneeling with my left leg. And she's gonna be in a figure four. So I'm gonna go ahead and press down over both knees for a nice hip opener. Just pausing here. And then I'll begin walking, palm press walking, using my hips, my lower body, and transferring that weight through my arms and into my hands as I walk up to the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS, and then walking back down. Nice and slow, everything nice and flowy. And then I'm going to once again press over both knees and then slowly releasing. I'm gonna sit down on my sits bone now and I may need to move my client's arm just a little bit out of the way. I'm gonna take her leg and I'm going to bring it into a 90 degree angle and I'm going to cross her leg over the top of my leg. My leg needs to be bent, so my knee needs to be bent for this to work, because if my leg is straight, well, with her it works, but with many people, you wouldn't be able to really wrap that foot around and it wouldn't be secure. So bend your leg a little bit, wrap their leg around yours, hold on to her heel with your right hand. With my left foot, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press. If I want the pressure to be softer, I'm gonna use the arch of my foot. If I want it to be deeper, I'm gonna curve my foot around to the lateral aspect and sink in with this blade edge of my foot. And if I want it to be really deep, um, each time, remember, you're moving very slowly, but I would use my heel or the ball of my foot. So for her, I'm gonna go ahead and sink with my arch first and then kind of sink in. Is that too much? and then slowly release. So with this, you're again dividing the space that you're working on into thirds. So one, two, and then moving up a little more, three, and then back, two, and our final press, one. So now I'm going to bring her foot over my leg and out. I'm gonna hold her ankle with my right hand and I'm just gonna begin walking with my feet on her hamstrings. If you want to, you could even hold with both hands if that feels more secure to you. But just walking, walking. And you can repeat this as many times as you intuitively feel is beneficial in your massage. So now I'm gonna to walk towards the popliteal space. I'm going to move my right foot under my client's leg and my left foot stays very close to the popliteal space. I'm gonna cross her leg over my leg and I've got her locked in. I, this is a compression on the musculature and the tendons that are feeding into this area near the popliteal space. So I'm now going to scoot out a little bit and forward I'm gonna reach my hands over and I'm just gonna pull back walking to her hip and then walking back to her knee. I'm gonna gently support her knee and everything's very like locked in here and I'm gonna do some loose fist to potment. And then I'm going to gently lift her leg up and place her heel and her entire foot on the mat. I'll be coming around, supporting her knee, and then I'm gonna bring her heel very close to her glute, and I'm gonna take the corner of my elbow and just reach it around here and secure it with my other arm, and then just lean back, giving her a nice stretch, and then slowly letting her return. I'll bring her foot out a little bit towards me, and we're gonna begin a movement that is called cross pull. So I'm going to 
traction back first, placing both my hands on her quads and fingertips come around onto the adductors on the medial aspect and then they come around to the IT band on the lateral aspect for leg. And so I'm gonna pull in one direction and then walk a little bit down, pull in the other direction. Keeping the traction the entire time and refraining from any type of leapfrog movements. So I just keep everything nice and locked in. And like the majority of the movements in Thai massage, this is still all coming from your lower body, your hips, and your arms are in this fixed position where they just flow and move with the rest of your body. So what we don't wanna do is leapfrog type movements. We want everything to stay nice and locked in, flowy, nice, slow, rhythmic, relaxing massage. So now I'm gonna go ahead and interlace my fingers, turn my thumbs down, and I'm going to press in. We're gonna do that one, two, three, two, one movement again, dividing the space that I wanna work on into thirds. One, two, three, two, relaxing your neck, relaxing your shoulders, one, okay? Now I'm gonna interlace my fingers and I'm just going to Squeeze, so squeeze that musculature on either side. Squeezing, the more you sink in, the more you soften your shoulders and your neck. One, two, three, two, and finally one. So now I'm gonna bring her foot out even a little more, still supporting with my knees. And I'm gonna take my thumbs and press into the musculature in the center of the hamstrings. So I'll start just superior to the popliteal space and sink in one, find my second space, two, and then the third space, three, and then back to center, two, and then finally returning to our starting place, one. And now we're gonna turn our attention to the gastrocnemius and soleus. So for this movement, I'm going to stack my hands and we're gonna be walking down the leg and then back up the leg. So I want to also have traction with this. So I'm gonna have my arm in this fixed position and lean my body back, my arm will come with me and so will her leg. So we're gonna begin walking, walking, down to the Achilles tendon, and then walking back up, just inferior, just below the popliteal space, and then traction back. The next movement that we're gonna do is going to be pressing the gastrocnemius and soleus away from the tibia and fibula. So I'm gonna interlace my fingers, and I'm going to sink in with the heel of my palm. So squeeze and push that musculature away. So this is a very strong movement. So you wanna make sure that you're not using too much pressure, uh, but then you also wanna make sure that you're using enough. It's really important that we get the pressure right with our clients because this is something where we signal to their mind to begin to release the tension in their body. And so sometimes I think as massage therapists, there's some of us that think that uh, we just need to use as much pressure as possible or we're really like working out a muscle. But in reality, there is just as much the component of sending the signal to our client's mind to finally soften the body. So that pressure preference that, that they believe in is vitally important to the success of our massage. Okay, so now we're gonna do a series of stretches. So I would continue on on this side, but before we do that, uh, just for continuity and you being able to learn this portion of the flow, I'm gonna move to the other leg. But know that normally I would continue working this entire side. So moving to the right leg. Once again, I'm going to hold at the Achilles tendon and 
and the calcaneus, her heel. And I'm gonna hold her right foot with my left hand. And then I'm gonna reach around with my right hand. I'm gonna be as close as I can to the crease of the ankle. And my fingertips are on the plantar surface of her foot. So I'm gonna traction back and then twist her foot medially. One, moving to that second space. Two, moving to our third space. Three, back to our middle space. Two, and then finally to our starting place. One. Switch hands. Right hand holds under the Achilles tendon and at the heel calcaneus, take your left hand around and your fingertips, they're going to support on the plantar surface of the foot, the bottom of the foot. So this is something that we also need traction for. So lean back, have your arms stay in this engaged state. And we're gonna go ahead and twist. First position, twist. Second position, twist to your third space, coming back to center, and then finally returning to our first space. I'm going to support her ankle with my left foot, hold into the popliteal space with my right foot, bring her leg into that figure four, stand up onto my left foot, staying in a kneeling position with my right leg, and my hands are gonna come just above both of her knees. And I'm going to go ahead and just sink my body weight down, providing that hip opener. And then I'll begin walking. With her musculature, I'm rolling this muscle inward, so medially, and then securing it. But you may have some clients where you would just press straight down always slow and incremental. Otherwise, it's kind of like uh, the difference between punching your client uh, versus giving them a massage. Those differences matter. And then we're gonna go ahead and sink down over both of the knees. So we're just superior to both the knees, just above them. So one hand, this right hand, I'm on the quads, and with my left hand, I'm on the adductors. So go ahead and slowly release. I'm gonna sit down to my sits bone. I'm going to move her arm away a little bit. I'm gonna move her leg out into a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna place my left foot just superior to the popliteal space. I'm gonna keep this nice little bend in my leg so that I can wrap her leg around mine. I'm gonna hold her heel with my left hand and then I'm gonna begin the presses with my right foot. Remembering that we can do softer pressure with the arch of our foot, deeper pressure by transferring the weight into the lateral blade edge of our foot, or we could use our heel. You have to be very careful with that though or we can use a ball of our foot for very deep pressure. So if you were to use a ball of your foot, you wanna make sure your foot is secured and still slowly, incrementally sink in. With your heel, the same thing. Make sure you're in a secure position. Slowly, incrementally sink in. You get that maximum depth and then you slowly come out of the movement. No mini punching, okay? So for her, I'm gonna use the arch of my foot and then slowly transfer that weight into the lateral aspect of my foot. Dividing the space into thirds. One, two, three, two, and finally returning to our first position, one. Now I'm gonna move her leg and her foot over my left leg. I'm gonna secure and support her ankle with my left hand. I might wanna scoot my body out a little bit. And I'm gonna begin walking with my feet, with the arch of my feet. And if you want to, you can hold onto the foot with both hands. This is up to you. Whatever is more comfortable, just walking, walking. and then returning to just superior to the popliteal space. So now I'm gonna take my left foot, it's gonna go underneath her leg and out, and I'm gonna cross her leg over my right leg. I'm gonna scoot out a little bit and forward so we're locked in together here, and I'm applying that compression 
to the tendons and to the musculature just superior and also inferior to the popliteal space. So it's nice and locked in. This is so great for people who are having knee issues because a lot of times they might even come from these tendons being really, really tight. Uh, especially if you're working with people that do a lot of bodybuilding, things like that. They'll build up the belly of the muscle, but they won't really take care and really, um, really work with the tendons that attach. And so it's important to get that softening and get that attention there. So I'm gonna pull back and walk to her hip and then walk back down to just above her knee. And then I'll do loose fist to potement. Just one pass up and one pass down with my right hand. I'm gonna gently lift her leg up onto the mat. I'm gonna come up onto my knees and I'm gonna move her heel a little bit closer to her glute so we can get a nice stretch here. And then I'm gonna use the crook of my elbow, wrap my other arm around and just lean back. You'll feel a stretch through your back and they'll feel a stretch through their entire core. Through their hips. Where do you feel the stretch? Everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah, yeah it's a good, good full body stretch. And then slowly release. I'm gonna bring her foot out towards me and then we'll begin our cross pull. So remember our hands are stacked, we're not going to leapfrog and we're gonna keep everything in good traction. So pulling one direction and the other. And remember that all these movements are with your arms in a relatively fixed position and the movement really comes from your core, your hips, your lower body and just transfers into your arms and into your hands. Everything flowing. Next, we'll interlace our fingers, bring our thumbs down, and we're gonna go ahead and press on either side of the legs. So we're gonna be on the adductors and the IT band primarily with this. One, two, three, two, one positioning, three spaces, dividing the leg into thirds, and then coming back. Two, and then returning to our starting point. Next, we're going to, with our hands interlaced, just squeeze that musculature. Remembering to soften your shoulders, soften your neck. And in fact, the deeper you work, the more you're gonna soften your body and the more you're going to relax as the therapist. Maintaining that relaxed, meditative state. So next, we're gonna turn our attention to the hamstrings. And we're gonna just press with our thumbs on the center line. So we're gonna go ahead and sink in, double thumb pressing, one, and then to our center space, two, our third space. We're dividing the space that we're working on into thirds, three, slowly, slowly releasing, and then back to the center, two, and then returning to our first space. One. Now we're going to turn our attention to the gastrocnemius and soleus. We're gonna stack our hands and we're gonna get into a nice traction with our client. And we're just gonna walk down and then walk back up. So walking inferiorly and then superiorly. But first I'm gonna engage traction and then begin to walk. Walking inferiorly, gastrocnemius, moving into the Achilles tendon, and then walking back up. And then finally, we're going to interlace our fingers and squeeze the gastrocnemius and soleus away from the tibia and fibula with each of those little presses. So sinking in, pressing, and leaning forward. One. <clears throat> Dividing the space that we're working on into thirds. Two, and then by the Achilles tendon, three, stretching your own back, and then back to our middle position, two, and then finally returning to just below that popliteal space, one. And now we're ready to start our series of leg stretches. So, 
We'll go ahead and move to the next segment.